Hey everyone, Mr. McIntosh here, and today Apple released a surprise update, macOS Sequoia 15.3.2. In this video, we're gonna go over everything included in this update, along with a preview of Open Core Legacy Patcher for unsupported Macs running against the latest version of 2.2.0. Let's jump in and get started. Apple last week released new Mac hardware, including a new M4 MacBook Air and a new M3 Ultra and M4 Mac Studio. This is important because those devices were shipped with older versions of Mac OS Sequoia. The MacBook Air was shipped with 15.2 and the Mac Studio was shipped with 15.3. Now that's important because these two devices got a different update than the regular 15.3.2 that was released today. If we look at the full update release list today, we can see the difference here. We've got what's called is a forked full installer, which is 24D2082. And usually when you see four digits, that means it's hardware specific. And then this particular build is only for the new M4 MacBook Air and the M3 M4 Mac Studio. For everyone else, the mainline update is 15.3.2 24D81. Now, along with Sequoia, there was no update for Mac OS Sonoma and there was no associated update for Mac OS Ventura. On the mobile side, we've got an iOS and iPad update 18.3.2. And for the new iPhone 16e and new iPad, We've got the, another forked build, a 22D8082, no update for 17, no update for HomePod OS. We did get an update for just Apple TV 4K 3rd gen, no watch OS update, and we did get a Vision OS update 2.3.2. Now we have two demonstration Macs here today and we are testing both platforms. I'm using a Mac Mini T2 from 2018, one of the oldest supported Intel devices. And for our Apple Silicon side, we're using a MacBook Air M1 2020. I selected these devices because they're one of the oldest versions available. So we wanna be able to test the performance and how the update reacts to these different pieces of hardware. I have the MacBook Air sitting here and I'm using screen share to be able to do a connection directly to the machine so we can do our test here. For the update, all we need to do is go into system settings and then go into general or click on software update available when it checks for the software update. Once inside, we can see that the update is available for 15.3.2. If we wanna be able to get more information about it, we can click that and we can see for Apple Silicon, the update's right here. All we need to do is click on update now. We'll click agree and we'll enter in our user password. And there it goes. We're gonna keep track on how long it takes to prepare and install each update on both platforms and we'll be right back after the installation is complete. Okay, we're back up after the update and our build version like we talked about earlier in the video was 24D81. There was no associated beta update for this update and usually there isn't for security update releases. So how long did it take to install the 15.3.2 update? It is right in line with smaller security updates. It only took about a minute longer than the previous 15.3.1 update. And when we have a feature rich update, we can see we're around 10 to 12 minutes in installation time. Now when we go over to our Intel Mac Mini side, we can see how much longer it takes to install and how much better the updated and quicker installation process of the Mac OS updates are on the Apple Silicon platform. We're over double the amount of time that it takes to install at 20 minutes compared to nine minutes on the Apple Silicon device. Now let's take a look at the 13.3.2 update size for the different platforms. On our supported Apple Silicon Macs, if we are installing from 15.3.1, we'll get the smallest update size of 1.45 gigabytes. If we're on the Intel side and we have 15.3.1, we are getting 642 megabyte update. If we're running a unsupported Mac with OpenCore Legacy Patcher, we expect to see the full update, which is 15.2.2 gigabytes, and that's normal. Now let's take a look at the firmware update side of the 15.3.2 update. On Apple Silicon, we did not see a firmware update. Same thing goes with the OS Loader version on iBoot. On the T2 Intel side, we did get a bridge OS update for the T2 system. We updated from 13.051 to 13.060. So that's an interesting change on the Intel T2 bridge OS Max. Now on the firmware side, it did not get updated. We are still running at 8.03. Now let's take a look at what's actually in the macOS Sequoia 15.3.2 update. And just like last time, this update provides important security fixes and is recommended for all users. Great. 
okay, we might as well end the video right now, right? No, I'm just kidding. Or am I? I don't know anymore. Let's try to dig a little bit deeper to figure this out. We are over at the Apple security updates and rapid security response update page. This is kind of funny because we have not had an RSR update since Mac was Ventura. I don't even know why they still have this up here. And Macola, I talked with him today and we kind of joked that I don't think Apple's ever going to come out with this again. We both agreed it's a great program and it's probably dead on arrival and will not be making a comeback. When we scroll down here, we can see Mac was Sequoia 15.3.2. So when we go into the article, we can see the security updates and we do have one for Mac OS Sequoia 15.3.2. Available WebKit Sequoia. Impact, a maliciously crafted web content may be able to break out of a web context sandbox. This is a supplementary fix for an attack that was blocked in iOS 17.2. Apple is aware of a report that this issue may have been exploited in an extremely sophisticated attack against a specific targeted individuals on version of iOS before 17.2. Description and out of bounds right issue was addressed with improved checks to prevent unauthorized actions. If we go over to the NIST.gov website, we can see and read more into the CVE and we can see the source was reported by Apple Incorporated. It gives the full listing here, just like it does on Apple's website. Now, what's interesting about this too is, is that we saw there it was calling out iOS 17.2. Alignment update for 17.2 is Mac was Sonoma 14.2. Now, what this is saying was is that is a supplementary fix for an attack that was blocked in that update. What we're thinking here is what this sounds like is that maybe someone found an additional way around that fix that they implemented in there. And it's also saying that they are aware of issues that it's being exploited on versions before 14, I'm guessing 14.2 and 17.2. I wish they specifically called out the macOS versions but that's all we can go on is what was released with 17.2 and that was 14.2. And we're going back to the page. We know that this is a WebKit and we know that Safari was updated. So if we take a look at the Safari version, we did get an update from 18.3 to 18.31 and we got a small version jump from 11.5 to 11.6. Now this is what's important about macOS Sonoma and macOS Ventura. If we look at our Safari downloads, we got individual Safari downloads for macOS Sonoma for 18.3.1 and for macOS Ventura 18.3.1. So if you go into your software update, you will see a new version of Safari that will protect you against this vulnerability that was patched in this update. And they include Safari 18.3.1 in macOS Sequoia, so that's why they don't include a standalone download for the latest macOS version. Another thing that I wanted to go over in this update was the fact that there's been reports of Apple Intelligence and Siri being reactivated if you disable it. So if you turn this off, or it was always off, and it was turned back on, that was already covered in 15.3, that Apple was automatically turning it back on if it wasn't activated before. We did cover that. But what wasn't covered was that Apple Intelligence might be turning itself back on after you turned it off. So my question is to you, if you have a supported Mac on Apple Silicon because it's not supported on Intel and you turn this off, did this get turned on for you again? I'll be curious to see because Mac Rumors did report it, but there was also a lot of people saying that it did not get turned on for them. So I'm really curious to see what is behind this. Now let's take a look at the Geekbench 6 benchmark scores on both our Mac Mini Intel and our M1 MacBook Air. You can see right off the bat the big performance gain on your single core scores for Apple Silicon and your really good multi scores. So when we go look at the 15.3.1, we've got a 1571 and a 6698. And on 15.3.2, we got a 1569 and a 6762, barely any change. And again, that's what we're looking for. When we're doing this, we want to see really even scores across our security updates. We shouldn't see any big swings. Now on our Apple Silicon M1, we got a 2394 and an 8775 for our multi-core. And on 15.3.2, very close again, 2399 and an 8770. 
Now we're going to do a quick preview of 15.3.2 against the latest version of Open Core Legacy Patcher 2.2.0. Keep in mind, I always do dual videos. I do supported with a quick preview, and then the next day or two, I will do a full test against the entire fleet of 14 Macs that are unsupported against the latest version of Mac with Sequoia and Open Core Legacy Patcher to check compatibility. With that said, we don't necessarily always get an associated Open Core Legacy Patcher update with a Mac OS update. As long as everything's working okay, we usually can move forward with the previous update. The 15.4 update for Sequoia is in beta mode now, and there is some issues, so I do not recommend installing that. And we'll get into that in the unsupported video that I'm working on in the next day or two. We're at 2.2.0, and we've got three test models that we're going to test against. Our Retina Kepler-based MacBook Pro 15-inch mid-2014, our AMD-based Mac Pro desktop and our unsupported MacBook Pro 17 inch 2011 non-metal. So first, our 2014, everything looks good on Open Core Legacy Patch 2.2.0, but as I've talked to before, the dang software update on Kepler devices is still causing problems. I'm not sure why. When you click on software update, sometimes it doesn't load, it takes forever. I've been working back and forth with ways around this, sometimes just tricking it by clicking it, going back in there again. I'm going to test next time with uninstalling the root patches, and I think that will fix it, so you'll be able to install the software update, and when it comes back up, apply, and you're good to go. With that said, we have our MetaLib support package on this Mac. We go into our hard drive, we go library, application support, in our Dortini folder, MetaLib support package, we can see we're at 15.3.1. But if we go to the website, we've got a 15.3.2 MetaLib support package. McCullough was nice enough to take the time to explain to me that the way this works is, is that after an update is available, the MetaLib support package will build on the server automatically, but it only checks every four hours or so. So after the update comes out, the service will check see there's a new update available, build this version and make it available for download. So what that means is, you can see five hours ago, but that does not move back to our main 1230 release time. If you installed the Open Core Legacy Patcher update in 15.3.2 and you did not get this, that's because it wasn't built and prepared yet. That's where this system is. It was built without that Metal Lift support package and that's how we can see in here, we don't have the 15.3.2. So no big problem because most of the time, McCall has mentioned that the previous versions of the Metal Lift support package will also support the one or two releases in close parallel to the versions. But if you want to square up and be on the latest version, all you need to do is run the post install root patch again, and then check again by click start root patching. It'll check their website and it found this build right here. It's gonna download it, build it with the latest version of the Open Core Legacy Patcher patches, apply it, reboot, and you are fully up to date. So that's our mid 2014 15 inch MacBook Pro. Our next demonstration preview is our 2013 Mac Pro desktop. Now, this device I picked on our preview because it's important. We talked about our Metal Lib support package previously with the 2014 machine. This one needs the kernel debug kit. And you can see in here, library developer KDKs, we have our 15.3.1 and we have 15.3 and 2 installed. So what's the deal? Are we missing it? Is it late again? Well, last time we found out that it came out more than five days later after the update came out. So if we go to the website, the GitHub for the KDK support package, we can see here we do not see a 15.3.2 build. Again, that's not the end of the world because we are most likely still compatible with 15.3.1, but Apple still could release a 15.3.2 later. So we'll have to keep an eye on that. And again, I'll talk more about this in my unsupported Open Core Legacy Patcher video coming up, but this is what we have available. So we have our full root patch is on 15.3.2 with the 15.3.1 KDK and everything's running well on our Mac Pro 2013. 
Our third and final machine in our preview is our late 2011 17 inch MacBook Pro. We picked this one because it is non-metal. Metal compatible video cards are important for metal heavy applications like maps for example. So this is a important machine to test for our preview. We're running 15.32 on our 220 system. Everything is running fine with no issues whatsoever. We'll have to keep an eye to see if that KDK 1532 comes out. If it does, we'll run those root patches again. We'll pull down that KDK and we'll be all squared away. And again, I'll cover this in more and 15.4 and the next version of Open Core Legacy Patcher 230 in the next video tomorrow or the next day for unsupported Macs. And that's the 15.3.2 update video. Are you going to install it? Usually I give a recommendation on whether you should install it or not. And it's tough to do with security updates because the last thing I want to do is say, eh, it's only got one fix in it. And it said it's for really highly targeted systems. So maybe you shouldn't install it. It's really hard to say no when it revolves around security. You look at the different odds and whether you could be affected or not, and I would always go on the side of safe and sorry. So usually a yes, I recommend when it includes a security update to install it, especially if Apple's gonna go through all the trouble to release a security update for all the millions upon millions of Macs. They view it as important and I do too. If you're running Safari, if you're running Sonoma or Ventura, you can install that Safari update and be covered. Are you running Mac OS Sequoia? Are you still running Sonoma or even Ventura? So let me know in the comments. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll catch you in the next one. Thanks.